We were having a conversation with Nick Lardy um, of Peterson Institute about all the news that has broken overnight out of China in regard to that country's premier saying, you know, economic growth is going to be at 8 percent, inflation is going to be at 3 percent, and giving some uh, indications as to how that government is going to be investing in its own economy. So we want to bring Nick back in. Thank you for being patient, Nick. I do appreciate you standing by. Thank you. Um, before we cut you off, you had been saying that you do expect growth to actually be far in advance of that 8% level that uh, the Chinese Premier said to expect last night. Right. Last year, they had a tremendous headwind from the international economy because the collapse of their exports. And I think with, uh, with the U.S. recovery now underway and hopefully some recovery in Europe, that the external sector will not be as big a drag on the economy as it was last year. So uh, if that eventuates, I think they will grow at a somewhat faster rate this year than they did last year. You know, it was interesting in looking at uh, the premier's remarks. Not only did he talk about, you know, the banks and warning of, of some concern about overheating, um, he also talked about starting to invest in the social security system there internally in China to invest in uh, some of the low income housing projects. Basically, it sounds like raising the standards of living for those people who live outside the major cities that have seen the boom you're talking about. How significant is this? Well, I think it's, a, uh, it's an acceleration or a continuation or a renewed emphasis on consumption, which uh, Premier Wen has talked a great deal about in recent years, but this address yesterday in Beijing was really filled with discussions of policies that are designed to increase uh, income levels of, of uh, residents of China and to increase their consumption. They're really looking to have consumption be a much bigger driver of economic growth. They want to rein back a little bit on the investment side, have slower growth of credit. For, you know, he talked about the financial risks. Uh, so they need to have more consumption-driven growth rather than investment and credit-driven growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was really quite specific in a number of areas of how they're going to try to continue that process. Absolutely. Education, health care, social security. But, you know, so often, Nick, on this network, in any kind of financial conversation you have, we talk about the Chinese consumer as almost this, this monolith. But there's a very different experience if you live in a major city or if you live out in some of the rural areas. And that explosive growth has really benefited the metropolitan metropolitan areas. I mean, tell me how concerned we should be about perhaps that, that divide in standard of living internally, what that means politically for Chinese leadership. Well, there is a big gulf between urban and rural and between the coast and the interior, but uh, rural growth of income has been very robust in the last few years. They've had record harvests now six years in a row. Uh, rural incomes went up 8.5% uh, last year. Uh, they put in a lot of consumption subsidies for rural people last year, about 45 billion RMB, uh, and we saw very, very strong growth of consumption in rural areas, particularly things like uh, vehicles, small multi-purpose vehicles. They cut the taxes on those by half, and there was a huge boom in sales of those, mostly to, uh, to farmers and other rural residents. So they're not growing as fast or uh, participating quite as much as urban areas, but their real living standards are going up at a fairly good clip. Mm -hmm. Is there a property bubble in China? I don't think so. Uh, prices are barely into the double-digit range uh, on a national average, and the loan-to-value ratio on average uh, on a property in China is about 40%. So there's not very much leverage. Uh, the problem is a few cities where prices have gotten uh, into the stratosphere. There could be a big correction in those cities. But I don't think we're going to see a national property price correction that has uh, significant uh, financial implications for the whole country. Shanghai is not going to be Las Vegas? Uh, no, because remember, the minimum down payment is 20 percent. So people aren't going to walk away from their properties when prices just go down a couple percentage points. All right. Thank you so much.